Hey guys, so in this video, I'd like to talk about internals of ID function of Python. Uh, let's go through the official documentation of it. It says that ID function returns the identity of an object. This is an integer which is guaranteed to be unique and constant for this object during its lifetime. This is a very critical statement. But a really interesting statement pops up which says that two objects with non-overlapping lifetimes may have the same ID value. See Python implementation detail. This is the address of the object in memory. Right. So we went through a lot of text. Now let's start making sense out of it. So now what it says that uh, with respect to C Python implementation of it, this is an address of the object in memory. Right. So when you, so whenever you are invoking the ID on any object the value that you get as a return of uh, basically as a return value from this function it is nothing but the address of that object in memory right you'll get an integer value and but this integer value would be the position or would be the address of that particular object in re, in the ram right and uh, the this value is guaranteed to be unique and constant for its object during lifetime which makes sense for an id function but the imp the interesting clause is during its lifetime so once the object is deleted the same id will be or can be allocated to any other random object out there right but why so because since id function gives you with respect to c python i'm talking since the id function returns the uh, since id function returns the memory address of the object let's say if someone deleted that object explicitly which is garbage collected your uh, your uh, your runtime would identify that that slot is vacant and uh, whenever you're trying to do malloc again that same address could be assigned to a different to to as an output of, uh, to to a different malloc operation right so any other python object can reuse or is allowed to reuse the same memory address which means that the id value is not unique for so same id value can be reused by two object having non overlapping lifetimes right so one got deleted other got malloc both might have same id but within the same life or uh, uh, within the lifetime object of the this is going to be constant right this makes sense so now what we'll do is although it says in the documentation but let's let's go through the source code and find out that does c python really implement it using this particular way so does it really return the address of the object right so obviously let's not just depend upon the documentation but let's use this opportunity to dive deep into source code and see how all of these things are defined right so id is a global function you don't really have to import anything to use id so all of these things are built in a module called built-ins right it's called built-ins b-u-i-l-t-i-n-s here it's written so uh, it raises an auditing event. Let's keep all auditing event is, but it is it returns like uh, it raises builtins dot id. So builtins is the default module which gets loaded when your Python runtime starts up. So this function would be defined in builtins module in the source code. Uh, let's open C Python ka thing setup that I have set up. So now uh, what Python follows is if something if a function uh, if a function pqr is defined in a module abc the function most probably would be named as abc underscore pqr right so uh, built-ins module may if id function is defined it has to be defined as built-ins underscore id right that is one way to trace a function in this in this humongous code base another way to do it is find a c file where built-ins module is defined so like sys module is defined in sys dot in sys module dot c right so if you are importing sys sys dot path or do you do something like that it will be invoked or it will be defined here right so all of those functions will be defined here uh, import sys you do sys dot exit that would be defined in sys module similar to that when we are talking about when you are talking about built-ins it would be defined in built-ins module, built-ins. But if you see, there is nothing called as built-ins. What they have done is to keep the name short, they have used the term BLTIN, built-in modules, 
right they have not used bu ilt ins it's just blt ins not really sure why they did it but it took me some time to figure this thing out so if i open built in module dot c i get this file and as we said that the name of the function would be built in underscore id bu ilt in underscore id here it is so we traced to that very function that gets invoked now since this is uh, this function is part of a module uh, it has this particular signature where the first argument is the pi module definition which is self and uh, you have the pi object which is being, being passed as an argument now what it does is it does a pi long from void ptr and it passes in v to that v is nothing but the argument that it received and this returned a pi object which has to be a pi long object and it stored it in id and it is returning this id right so let's dive deep into pylong and from void pointer what it does so pylong from void ptr accepts a void pointer so typically you can pass in any pointer to this and what it would do it is it uses p and just type defs it to u in ptr which is nothing but a macro that is unsigned long and then explicitly invoking unsigned long there right so it is basically converting my void pointer p into an unsigned long and then eventually converting it into a pi long object and returning it so as part of return value of any function it has to be a python object so that's where it is just using unsigned uh, long from p and converting it into pi long and returning it right very straight forward now what happens when i've passed in so i've i'm basically type casting p into an unsigned long so what exactly happens so p is nothing but a pointer to an object so in c language when you what happens so basically when you define a pointer it basically defines a very small integer value and it it it, it basically holds the memory address of the object that it is pointing right so if you are doing an int star x so x would store the address of the of an integer object right of the integer object that it that it is actually pointing to similar to this here when i'm passing in any object i'm passing in this its pointer to it so the value that p will hold will be nothing but the address of the object right so how can we print this value i can just do a printf percentage p would give me the hex value of this pointer and i can do a percentage ld which would give me an unsigned long value and in both cases i'll just pass in p this might throw in some errors here or there or uh, not errors but rather some warnings here or there but we would get the gist right so now what we'll do is uh, i'll just remake this part so until this make is happening here we can see that this unsigned long is being passed i'll just quickly open this function pi long from unsigned what it does it does this pi long from u int using unsigned long as a type and just type casting it and uh, yeah here it is just doing is it. it just it just basically storing uh, the unsigned long value in the pi long object these are internals about python long integers i've written a blog around this uh, you might find it on my website i'll just i'll just put the link in the description but uh, very soon i'll be making a video about internals of how python implements super long integers what kind of structures it uses to implement so so you can stay tuned for that but i'll anyway attach the link to the blog in the description which you can go through right now the make is done you'll see that it has already started printing something now when i start my python console uh, p y t h o n i would say something printed and uh, if i do a equal to 10 and i do uh, id of a right if when i do id of a it would print so just focus on the third line what it did is it printed as a return of id of it printed 140231 something 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 which is nothing but this value 140231552563 something right these two values are very uh, the, the this two values are exactly same and this is nothing but the hex re hex representation of it while studying c language we all have learned on how we could print the address Uh, or how we could print the address or how we could print the address that a pointer points to we do that with with percentage p when we are just using percentage ld to implicitly type cast it into a long integer and print it right to just to be assured that what we are in what we are actually getting is nothing but an unsigned long value of the object which is being printed here so that's why this two values are very uh, this two values are same and this is the hex representation of it
right so we just dive deep into the python source code and uh, found out on how exactly python is doing this it is exactly doing what it's written in the documentation but it is but it is fun to go through the source code and find it ourselves right because while doing so we explore a lot of unexplored territories which would make us much more comfortable with the code base to make some bigger changes to it right so in case you like this video give this video a thumbs up uh, if you like the content give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton